Hello and welcome to a quick video in which we get the Pico 4 up and running in Godot. We start within the Pico 4. We need to go to Settings, select the General tab, select About, scroll down until you see Software Version, click on this six or seven times. We should see a Developer tab appear, select the Developer tab, now turn on USB Debug. Next, we need to download the latest version of Godot 4. Once the stable release is available, you can download it from the Download tab. But for now, we find the latest release candidate on our blog. Scroll all the way down to the bottom of the blog post. We will download the standard build. I will be using the Windows build, but you can follow along on Linux or macOS. You will also need to download and install Android Studio and do a little bit of setup in Godot. This has already been performed on my computer, so please refer to the instructions within the Godot documentation. Be sure to create a debug key store as instructed. Next, we will need to download the latest version of the OpenXR Loader plugin. This plugin contains loaders for various Android-based devices that support OpenXR. On the latest version of this plugin, unfold the Assets section and download Godot OpenXR Loaders.zip. Now copy the contents of the Godot zip file into a location of your choice. The console version on Windows opens an extra window that shows our console output. We start the normal version. Cancel out of the Open Asset Library dialog if you get this. Select New Project. Press on Browse and select a folder in which you want to store our project. Give the project a name and click Create Folder to create a folder for it. Finally, if not already selected by default, make sure you choose the Compatibility Renderer. We are currently awaiting a driver update on the Pico that prevents the Mobile Vulkan Renderer from working. This should be resolved soon. That said, the Compatibility Renderer is well suited for devices like the Pico 4. Press Create and Edit to create the new project. We need to make sure our build templates are installed, so go to Editor. Select Manage Export Templates and select Download and Install. Now you can close this dialog. Next, open Project and select Install Android Build Templates. When we look at our project folder, we will see that a folder called Android has been created. This folder contains our build template. If you created this with an earlier version of Godot, you must delete this folder and reinstall the build templates of the new version of Godot. Inside the Android folder, you will find a folder called Plugin. Go to your Downloads folder and copy the files within the loader plugin we downloaded into the plugin folder of your project as shown. Back in Godot, we are going to create a scene by clicking on the 3D Scene button. We rename the root node to Main. Now we add a world environment. While we see a lighted environment in our editor, this is a default to ensure scenes being edited are visible even if no lighting is set up. This default setup is not present in your game. We create a new environment. We set the background mode to sky. In sky, we create a new sky, and then we add a procedural sky material. Note that you should not use the physical sky material for mobile VR applications. It's very pretty, but it is also very resource intensive. Next, we create a directional light. We rotate this by 45 degrees, and then move it upwards to get it out of the way. Our sky and directional light interact with each other. We want something to visualize our floor, so we add a Mesh Instance 3D. We create a plane mesh for this and size it up a little. Now for the XR related nodes. We first create an XR Origin 3D node. This node maps the center of our play space to our virtual world. All tracked devices are tracked relative to this location. 
Now we add an XR Camera 3D node, which tracks the user's HMD. While its position is automatically updated, we give it a default position so we can see it more easily. Next we add two controller 3D nodes. Each one will track one of the controllers. We rename the first to left hand, set its tracker to left hand and select the aim pose. Now we rename the second to right hand, set its tracker to right hand and also select the aim pose. We will also add a mesh instance to each hand just to visualize them. Simple boxes will do for now. We're just showing how to get set up. Godot has a wonderful tools library that I will link in the description below. This tools library has a number of hand assets you can just drop in. I have several videos on this tools library, but targeted at Godot 3, though most remains the same. I will be putting out videos for Godot 4 later in the year, so be sure to subscribe to my channel if you do not want to miss those. The interface is now warning us that we need to set up a number of project settings. However, before you do this, make sure you save the scene you just created or you may lose your changes. We will save it as main.tscn in our root folder. Now we can go to project and select project settings. Find the OpenXR tab and enable OpenXR. Now select the shaders tab and enable our shaders. Now scroll up and go to textures and enable import etc2 astc. Now you can press save and restart. Once we started, we can create a script on our main node. First, we use the XR server to find our OpenXR interface. Then we check if this was found and if this was initialized. If so, we get our viewport and set useXR to true. This will ensure that we see our game inside of the headset. Go to the project menu and select export. Here we configure our export templates. We need to add a template for Android. We can rename this to Android Pico. You can create additional templates for other devices you wish to support. We enable Use Gradle Build. We need to select the Pico loader so it is included in our project. Now scroll down until you find the unique name under Package. Give it a name. Scroll further down and change the XR mode to OpenXR. Now click on Close. If Android Studio has been installed and you followed the instructions in the documentation, and your Pico is set to developer mode and is attached with a USB cable to your computer, you should find your Pico in the pop-up list under this button in the top right hand corner of the UI. The first time you click on this, Godot will ask if you want to use the current scene as your main scene. Click select current. Godot will now build your project and export it to your Pico device. And with that, we have Godot running on our Pico headset. I have various videos on my channel showing where to go from here. There is also some nice documentation, both in Godot's official manuals and on our XR tools library. Links are in the description below. Please leave a like on this video if you found this useful. Until next time.